Welcome to Go Vote Omaha. This is a candidate forum for the Douglas County Board, District 5, presented by the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. I'm Jerry Simon, a League member and moderator for the forum. The League of Women Voters never supports or opposes political parties or candidates. We present this forum solely for voter education. Here's the format for our forum. Each candidate will have a one-minute opening statement. We'll follow that with questions. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer each question, and the candidate who answers first will have up to 30 seconds rebuttal time. We'll conclude our forum with a one-minute closing statement by each candidate. A timekeeper will alert the candidates when to stop speaking. Before the forum this evening, the candidates drew lots to determine their initial speaking order, which will rotate throughout the forum. I'll introduce them to you in that order now. There are two candidates running for the Douglas County Board in District 5 for a four-year term, and they are Mark Kraft and Mary Jane Trumper. And we'll go now to our opening statements, beginning with Mark Kraft. <coughs> I'm Mark Kraft. I've been your county commissioner for two terms. I was also two terms on the Omaha City Council, and I ran a business in downtown Omaha for close to 50 years. I have a vast experience working in community and being in the community. I was president of Downtown Omaha, Inc., which was a downtown neighborhood association. I have been active in the various transitions of the Dundee Memorial Park Neighborhood Association pretty much since 1971. I was involved with uh, uh, Love North Neighborhood Association, Benson Neighborhood Association, and many others. I have been very active in the community, for the community, and with the community. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to all of you today, and check my website, markcraft.com. Thank you. Mary Jane Trumper. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Trumper. I've never run for public office before. I consider public office seeking to be a way to give back to the community. Um, a civic duty, not a career opportunity. I grew up as the seventh of nine children and I worked my way through college. It took me seven years to get a four-year degree. I understand what it takes to live within a budget and to make hard choices. I love living in Douglas County and I want Douglas County to be a great place for everybody. I, um, I think that I have the skill sets I know I do, the skill sets, the energy, the um, will to provide positive uh, ideas, positive change to Douglas County, and I want an opportunity to use those skill sets to do that. I value your support, and I would be honored to have your votes. And please check out my website, votetrumper.com. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go right to our questions, and the first one is, do you support the county bond issue on the ballot for upgrading 911 equipment and other county infrastructure? Why or why not? And we'll begin with Mary Jane Trumper. I do support the bond issue. Um, I feel like the first and foremost duty of government is safety and security. And the 911 system is integral, not just to um, our individual emergencies, but also to um, tornadoes or other types of uh, emergency systems that we have. It's imperative that we have a 911 system that will be able to find people that have cell phones. Without that service, um, we really can't provide the safety and security that we need uh, in these tough times. Thank you. Mark Kraft. Uh, yes, 911 is vital to everyone in the city of Omaha, Douglas County, Ralston, and anybody who lives or visits our area. It's the first place, the first step in getting the response you need if you're having an emergency, if you need to call for police or fire. Uh, our 911 equipment is at its end of life. We were notified by Motorola that in 198, uh, <laughs> 2018, there were no longer will be parts or support for any of the system we have. We cannot afford to have it go down. We also need to update the uh, equipment so it will be able to function with what we call enhanced 911, which is your text and your video and other means such as Twitter. Uh, today's young people are so familiar with all of these social media sites, they want to use them for 
uh, accessing emergency services. There's a tremendous amount of potential. When we built the 911 center many years ago, there were two screens at each call taker's uh, station. Now there's five screens. When we go to enhance 911, we need to add at least one other screen. We also need to op uh, hire more operators because the population has changed. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further, Ms. Trumper? No, I agree with everything that Mr. Kraft said. Um, uh, and again, I just reiterate, it's an integral part of our emergency system and we have to replace it. And, uh, and I hope the bond <coughs> passes. Thank you. Here's our next question. The county and city have consolidated some of their functions, such as 911 services, the website, and of course they share a building. Do you support more consolidation of city and county services? What would you propose merging, and what can't or shouldn't be merged? And we'll start with Mark Kraft. Um, yes, I do support functional mergers. We do it through interlocal agreements. We've combined the low-hanging fruit, the purchasing, the 911, the, the uh, uh, parks. We need to do the crime lab. Yeah, I believe it's very important that we distance ourselves, that the attorneys and the law enforcement do not do the investigation or into the assessment, excuse me, of the, of the uh, material we find when we're doing the scene analysis. We need to have an arm's length distance so we don't run into problems like we've had in the past. And we've had uh, a major problem that cost the county hundreds of thousands of dollars and damaged our credibility in being able to assess the uh, crime scene correctly. Thank you. Mary Jane Trumper. I appreciate the fact that we have um, uh, joined together with the city, the 911 system, the GIS or geographical information system, which is the mapping uh, that <coughs> is done for properties. That's been uh, joined and has been very successful. Uh, there's still a GIS system in the tax appraiser's office, I believe, or tax assessor's office, the joint, they've, they've joined as well. But that uh, could also maybe be possibly in the future joined with the GIS system that the city and county also share right now. So there's other opportunities to be uh, joined. As far as the crime lab, I understand the desire and can appreciate the fact that we want to have everything on the campus at the Med Center. I find it um, difficult to say 100% I'm for doing that because we don't know what the cost will be. Is cost the only consideration? No, that's not the only consideration, but it is a consideration. And we have to be fiscally responsible. Um, the sheriff does have a great crime lab uh, that he's set up at the county level, and we just need to make sure that uh, it's fiscally responsible to move ahead with the crime lab at the Med Center. Thank you. Any rebuttal, Mr. Kraft? Yes, uh, fiscal responsibility is always on top of my mind. The thing is, you also have the moral obligation to make sure uh, that the system works correctly and not at a disadvantage to any one person or subject to pressure. Uh, a prosecutor, a defense, uh, the, the sheriff, anybody can put pressure on somebody who works for them. We need people who do not work for us so we can maintain credibility. Thank you. Here's our next question. Evaluate the budget process used by the county. Do you propose any changes in the process and how the property tax rate is determined? Are there new revenue sources that should be considered? We'll start with Mary Jane Trumper. Well, I believe what we have right now, the budgeting system that the county <coughs> uses is considered an incremental budgeting system. An incremental system is one that, say that we have 3% more revenue next year then the departments will share that 3% revenue incrementally um, depending on uh, the budget hearings and that money will be spent. Another way of doing budgeting is called zero-based budgeting or some form of zero-based budgeting and that's where you do basically start at zero and you prioritize your spending. The benefit of incremental budgeting is, the main benefit is it's very easy to do because you're not making great changes, you're just incrementally increasing your budget. 
it's harder to do a zero-based budgeting, but in the long run, it really forces departments to look at their priorities and determine what are the priorities we're going to spend on. Because we have to realize there's a finite amount of taxpayer dollars. There always will be. There will never be enough money to do everything you want to do. And we have to prioritize our spending. So I would suggest that uh, we look at maybe some sort of modification of a zero-based budget and start going from incremental budgeting towards something like that where we look more at priorities. Thank you. Mark Kraft. Yes. Um, I, I have a lot of experience in budgeting on the city council, on the county board, and in my business. Now, government accounting is very different than business accounting. We have to account for certain grants and be responsible for the spending of those money. The county is a stepchild of the state. We have to do what the state tells us to. What we do changes very slowly from year to year. The incremental system we use is fine. Zero base budgeting is fine. My experience with both has been that zero base budgeting ends up being incremental budgeting. Because the needs of the sheriff's department won't change much. He needs the same amount this year as he had last year, if not more because of inflation. The needs of the treasurer won't change very much. As we've decreased the treasurer's budget, as we have with the clerk of the, uh, the county clerk, because of efficiencies that we've been able to find through the use of technology, through uh, laying people off that were no longer serving vital critical functions. The uh, budget, when I was chair of the finance committee, we successfully started, I opened it up to public meetings. Every finance committee meeting we had was there for the public to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Any rebuttal, Mary Jane Trumper? Well, I will say that we do have man mandates that we have to follow from the state, and those mandates have to be met, that's true. But there's also a lot of functions within the county government that are not mandated. And those are the areas where we have to look at prioritization. There's not anything wrong with looking at priorities and deciding on um, which priorities you want to spend on. That should be an exercise that everyone does yearly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here's our next question. In 2015, TriWest did a study of the Omaha area adult behavioral health system and nine priority gaps were found. Some of them are insufficient access to care, lack of comprehensive psychiatric emergency system, and a shortage of mental health providers. What should the county do to eliminate those gaps? And we'll start with Mark Kraft. You know, <clears throat> first of all, we have to have more trained staff. And that staff is not available in the community. Throughout the community, there's a shortage of psychiatrists, APRNs, and other people who take care of our medical needs. We can draw people in from other uh, areas of the country, but to do that, you have to incentivize it. They need to be paid what they're getting paid elsewhere. The Midwest is not known for paying exuberant prices. Uh, we are wages. We have four psychiatrists who work for the county in our community mental health at one time, we had five. We need more than five. But the county, because some commissioners, not me, some commissioners thought we were in a budget crutch, dismissed the funding for one psychiatrist and cut $500,000 off the psychotropic, psychotropic, yeah, psychotic, antipsychotic medications. Uh, we need to step up to the plate. We need to do more than pay lip service to what we're doing. We need to make sure that we take care of the problem in every way we can, because mental health is one of the most driving forces. The correctional facility is the largest mental Thank health you. institute in the state. Thank you. Mary Jane Trumper. I do agree. We have a big problem, as do most communities in the United States with mental health and the lack of uh, proper amount of people to provide services. That's a common problem um, that we face. I myself have a family uh, history with brothers that had substance abuse and I feel like um, 
but we do need to hire more people to help in that area. But we're going to have to have help from the state. We cannot keep putting all of these initiatives on the backs of property tax owners. So we have to work with the state to find funding for these programs and expand it that way. Any rebuttal, Mark Kraft? Yes. Um, we have worked with the state, Region 6. One of the things we are doing is we have, are working to keep people out of the justice system. We're doing a 24-7 breath analysis. When a judge says somebody's uh, been abusing alcohol, we are sending them where they pay for the testing. Also, when somebody gets incarcerated and needs mental health, when they're released, we make sure they have a support system. Thank you. Here's our next question. This one is about county roads and bridges. Do we have a good plan in place for the repair and replacement of county roads and bridges? And is the funding adequate? And we'll start with Mary Jane Trumper. I think that the funding uh, should be a lot better than it was since we had the gas tax increase. That was what the gas tax increase was supposed to go to. Um, I've heard not just in Douglas County, but counties throughout the uh, state where the roads and bridges has been an issue, and we have to maintain that. I think that we have a good staff at the county level um, on our roads and bridges, and I think that they do have a plan. Uh, I'm not as familiar with it as I would like to be, but I do think that um, the gas tax and, and the way that the funds are distributed through the state, that we should be a lot better off than what we were. Thank you. Mark Kraft. In Douglas County, we're ahead of the curve on much of it. There can always be more that's done, but Tom Doyle has very effectively and efficiently utilized um, the gas tax revenue we have to put into the roads and the bridges. Now, there's always more to be done, but the state passed some legislation that allows us to build things back to their original specs instead of bringing them up to today's specs. Now, we have roads that are used, uh, bridges that are used once or twice a week. Do we need to put today's standards when the bridge that was there met the standards that existed 90 years ago and they lasted 90 years? So we're doing a good job. I believe we can do better. You can always do better. but. Uh, we're in good shape here in Douglas County. Ms. Trumper, any rebuttal? No. Okay. Our next question is, what are the top three priorities for the county in the next four years, and why are you the best person to address them? And we'll start with Mark Kraft. Okay. Mental health issues are one of my top priorities. Keeping people out of the justice system is another one of mine, and specifically keeping the youth out of the youth detention center. We're working with Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative, finding places and, and programs so the young person doesn't have to be incarcerated. We're working during the time we have a young person incarcerated on their reading skills. We have, in the past five, six years, uh, encouraged or increase the reading level when we have somebody for 31 days or more by two grade levels. We're doing that through simple means, get, giving, giving the young people something to read that they're interested in, such as the Amazon leader, the person who, uh, who does Tesla, uh, about cars, about, um, I subscribe to about 20 magazines that I give to the youth center and they use them for educational purposes. Uh, we have uh, non-mandated services that we provide. Those non-mandated services get reviewed yearly. And those non-mandated services save us $3 or more for every dollar we spend. And if we can keep somebody out of incarceration, that's your property tax dollars. $95 a day to incarcerate somebody. Thank you. Mary Jane Trumper. Well, I think that my first goal would be to improve the budgeting process. My second goal would be to make sure that we get value for every dollar that we spend in the county. We should have a method of doing uh, performance measures, outcomes measures, and to make sure that the money is spent well and not to um, um, keep 
spending money on programs that are not functioning as they should. The last three, the third thing I would do, which is a big header, we have a lot of long-standing problems in Douglas County. We have one of the highest STD rates in the country and has been for the two decades, uh, almost two decades that I've lived here. I think that we need to address that issue. My medical background will be helpful with that. I also think that we have a problem still with our guardian ad litem system. We had a report back in 1998, then we had the um, auditor, the state auditor in 2004. 14 that gave a report and we're still uh, having those problems. And then I think also the juvenile justice and child welfare system. We're one of the top states for removing children from their home and we're also one of the top states for removing children and taking, sending them out of state um, to live. So we need to address some of those issues. The detention issue is another one. We have uh, disproportionate minority contacts. Uh, in our detention system. There's a whole litany of things that have been long-standing problems that need to be addressed and I feel like I have the energy, the knowledge base uh, to come in and offer some fresh ideas. Thank you. Any rebuttal, Mark Kraft? Yes, Health and Human Services and the Guardian or Ad Litems are issues that we need to take up with the state legislature. The only thing we do with Guardian Ad Litems uh, for young or for juveniles is we pay the Guardian Ad Litems bill. We do not have the ability to contest it. We have to pay whatever the court says that guardian ad litem is going to get. As far as health and human services and child protective services, there's a big breakdown there at the state level. We do not control it. Thank we you. do not, oh, I'm Thank sorry, you. let's see the stop. Okay, well, um, I think we have time for one more question, um, and that is, Last December, the county board voted to increase the pay for board members by about 33%. Do you agree with that decision? Why or why not? And we'll start with Mary Jane Trumper. No, that was the motivation for me to run for office, actually. I feel like that 34%, 33 point something percent increase was a slap in the face to taxpayers. Wages have, for the most part, been stagnant. And when I go door to door, people are appalled that we have that sort of a grand pay raise. Essentially, as I feel, public service is a civic duty. It's not a career, and we shouldn't be paying it as if it's a career. Um, it's essentially a one day a week job for the most part. I don't begrudge someone like a Marianne Borgeson, who's the board president, and she puts in many more uh, hours than that. But for a lot of the board members, um, it, it's part time at best. And I just feel like that uh, the taxpayers deserve better. I also feel like um, when there's a vote that's important, like this pay raise, when we have the repeal, that it's very important that you show up and, and vote for the taxpayers and make a stand. Thank you. Mark Kraft. I agree unless you're ill and throwing up in the toilet, if that was a reference to my missing that meeting. Uh, I don't think my fellow commissioners would have liked it had I shown up. I voted against the pay raise. It can be justified, but it was not necessary. Had I been able to make that meeting, I definitely would have voted against it. I just, as I said, I, one of the commissioners speculated that I wasn't sick and went on air and said that. The thing is, I was sick. And uh, I didn't speculate about why he uh, resigned as mayor back in 95. I could do a lot of speculation. But the fact is, the pay raise is now in place. We don't take it for ourselves. It's two years out. And, and Mary Jane pointed out something very interesting. She's running because of the pay raise. So maybe it will encourage young people to run because I'm the only one with the challenger. We have four candidates up. If you incentivize people to run, maybe we'll get some good candidates because I'm not gonna be in politics forever. I enjoy working with people. I enjoyed it when I was in my business. But we do have to encourage young people to engage in the political system. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Yes, I think um, it's mischaracterized why I'm running. I'm running because I thought that the pay raise was wrong to do. I feel like it was wrong, and, and I'm sorry if you were sick, but I think it's important that we have people that show up for important votes. Um, I, I just feel very strongly about that, 
and um, I have no interest in keeping that pay raise um, and would give that money to charity. I have no interest, and in fact, I will try to repeal it once elected. Thank you. Now it's time for our closing statements, and we'll begin those with Mark Kraft. And we have how much time? One minute. One minute, okay. Um, I've been called by the Omaha World Herald a voice of reason. Many of my constituents call me a voice of reason. I don't go off on conspiracy theories, I don't have tangents, I don't have a motivation other than making the city of Omaha, the county of Douglas, the state of Nebraska, a place where my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren will want to live. It is all about the community. I don't take credit for a lot of the things I've done. I uh, don't look for the limelight. I avoid the press when I can. But it's all about our children and the next generation. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Jane Trumper. I just want to say that I love living in Douglas County. I think that we have a great place here to live, and I just want to see Douglas County continue to grow. I want it to be a good place for everybody. I don't feel like when I go door to door, like I say, it breaks my heart when people say that they have to sell their homes, uh, that they can't afford to live here anymore. And as long as we keep maintaining the status quo and we don't bring in fresh ideas, we don't bring in new energy, we're going to just keep getting what we've been getting. And I want to be a voice of I am a voice of reason. I, I am very educated. I'm knowledgeable. I have a, a son that lives here, a daughter-in-law, and two grandchildren. This is a long-term place for me. I'm not going anywhere, and I want it to be the best place possible. And that's what I want to do is work for the people of Douglas County. Thank you. This concludes our candidate forum for the Douglas County Board District 5. We'd like to thank the candidates both for participating in our forum. For the League of Women Voters, I'm Jerry Simon reminding you to inform yourself about the issues and the candidates and on Tuesday, November 8th, go vote Omaha.